How's it going? It's Marquise Taylor, up and coming welterweight, ranking the top 100 right now in the U.S., future world champion, and you watching Real Deal with a Kid. Houston, Texas. We have six and one go to eight, going for seven and one against Vincent Floyd, August 11th in Philly at the Sugar House Casino. Doors open at six. First fight at seven. General admission is at fifty dollars. Ring size seventy five. VIP a hundred dollars. You can purchase your ticket at event. Bro, I'm talking about Marquise Taylor, six and one go to eight out of Houston, Texas. Man, first of all, how you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Man, so seeing you spar a couple of days ago, my first reaction was this. This man has swagger in the ring. The link, everything you have is a well toy right now. First of all, I was going to talk about when you first started off boxing. When did you first start getting into it? Well, first time walking to the gym, I was about seven years old. First walking into the gym with my pops and my brother. Initially, it was just supposed to be my um, my older brother that was just going to box because I was so young. I was seven. He was like 10. So my pops really was just taking him to the gym. But I wanted to be just like my older brother. So I was like, you know, I want to do this too. You know, they let me know that uh, that I wasn't going to be able to compete until I turned eight, which is the minimum age to, to compete as an amateur. So I was like, man, I still want to train. I still want to do everything my brother do. So... I'm going to train until I turn eight, and that's, that's how I So that's when you boxing. started boxing, you started seeing your brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. It was just supposed to be for my brother at first. Yeah, I was playing flag football at the time. Football oh, yeah. was my thing. Yeah, I played flag football myself. Cause we the same age. I played, I don't know if you played four-pin Falcons, I doubt it. I, I played, played for the South Bay Mustangs when I was seven. South Bay Mustangs? Yeah. <laughs> we, was in, we, was, we was in two different leagues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in two different leagues. I was yeah. in the, the four-pin league, but then your brother, he is he still fighting out? Where, where is he now? Oh, right now he's uh he's teaching at Madison High School right now. Okay, yeah, so y'all all turn bro. So all y'all born and raised in Houston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what high school you went to when you uh he went to Madison? I went to Yates. Yates. Yeah. Class of eleven. Class twelve. Of twelve. Twelve. So you was so you was the year when bas the basketball they they were still yeah. good but they wasn't you know. Nah, I was both. there both years. I was there yeah. with the back to back years. You know. Um. Yeah, we was number one in the nation when I was when I was there. My last two years. So could you say your brother when he um, when he started boxing, you started watching him. So it was, it was just y'all two in the family that started boxing at first. Yeah, it was just me and him. Yeah, you know, like I said, first day walking in, I ain't do it the first day. Yeah. But the second day, that's when I was like, all right, daddy, I wanna I wanna do it too. He was like, all right, you know you gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? Don't quit. You know you gonna do it. Do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I wanna do it. So yeah. is he, does he have experience as well as fighting, or he just, oh, yeah. just trained uh, y'all? Yeah, he, he competed as, a, uh, as an amateur and did his little thing, but he never took it serious and went pro with it. Okay, so it's just y'all too. So then who was like when you say your brother, you watched your brother, so you can say that was your role model or inspiration oh, yeah. growing up? Yeah, I wanted to be just like my older brother growing up, definitely. Definitely wanted to be just like him, so I seen him do it, and I was like, oh, I can do it too. What class he was? You were a Volkswagen right now, so where was he at? When he stopped boxing, he was, he was bigger than me. He was... You know, well, both he was like, yeah, he he stopped at 140. Yeah, but he was 14 years old. Why he stopped? Uh, he Zach never. My brother never really wanted to turn pro with it. He always said that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when he got to high school, started doing other things. You know, doing joining other clubs in high school, just doing other other things. You know, he kind of just stopped. I feel like with boxing, I feel like he had to have some type of like mean streak, maybe. I think it's like a couple of things. First, mean street. Something in you. Deep down inside you gotta have some type of mean street, anger street. Then number two, you probably you gotta take a hit. It's like playing football, you know, like yeah. you take that if you can't take a hit, then you're gonna be tempted and scared to do whatever, you yeah. know, to keep playing that sport. Yeah. So it's kinda like the scared, same thing. Man. You can't be scared, you know. It's the hits you don't see that that hurt, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The ones you see coming and everything, ain't hey, that hurt the ones you don't see coming to hurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's about controlled aggression. It's about chess and not checkers, thinking two, three moves ahead. That's what boxing is about. You know, it's controlled aggression. 
But I mean, I'm, I'm super happy, you know. It might sound crazy, but I'm yeah. super happy in the ring. So outside, outside your, your brother, who was, was there anybody who was watching growing up? Because first, first of all, was boxing your first sport that you wanted to play? Because nah, you didn't say you want to play football. Yeah, I wanted to be in the, in the league at first. I wanted to be in the NFL at first. It then just changed, like, yeah, all right. Football just, was my first love at first. And then boxing was like, all right, let me just box. Was, any, was there a box that you watched growing up, too? Oh, yeah, man. Roy Jones Jr. was. was Roy was, was cold. In his prime when yeah. I was growing up, he was the first floor. You know what I'm saying? It was all about Roy Jones Jr. at first. Yeah. You know? And then he had the offense to back it up, too. Yeah. He had that Philly show defense. I mean, still to this day, can nobody do what Roy Jones did when he was in his prime? Yeah. Nobody can do what he did, man. But yeah, he was my favorite boxer. So right now, if you have to pick, right now, you have to pick a favorite, what, well, top five. You give me a top five list. Not favorite, but who you think is top is, right is now? five. Whatever. Now, I, I think right now, I mean, like I said, like we talked about before, the general public doesn't know, you know, yeah. the five guys right now. Yeah. My five guys that's hot right now, personally, you know, you go with Floyd. You know, he mm -hmm. was still the big name. Mm -hmm. Floyd, Triple G, Canelo, Andre mm -hmm. Ward. He's doing Terrence Confort. Crawford. Yeah. Those yeah. my five. Okay. You no, know, yeah, so that's I mean, five right there. Exactly. So you know, those are five guys people know. Yeah. You know, then you throw in uh, Deontay Wilder, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think those, I think those like the five, six people. But we go all time. It's gonna probably be. We'll probably go, <laughs> keep yeah. going for a while. Well, you know. I, I, I think for a second, all time. That's kind of hard. Man, number one gotta be the goat, of course, Ali, uh -huh. Muhammad Ali, and uh, Tyson somewhere in there. I know. Oh yeah, Tyson. I got them. I got them top two. You got them top two. Yeah, I have to. I think Culture, I got impact. Muhammad Ali, and then I gotta go with. I gotta go. I gotta go with my time. My favorite. Yeah, your your five. Marvin Hagler, believe it or not. The Hagler. Yeah, Hagler. Yeah. Hagler. Yeah. I mean, I keep thinking about the Hagler. Where I get my ideas from. You know, he yeah. was like, yeah, you know, Marvin's Marvin. Marvis Marquis. And then third, Sugar Ray Leonard. And then you gotta put Floyd in the best all time. Man. Ooh, that's to me that's that's kinda tough to, right man. there. You know Floyd, that's you that's to, you know what's crazy about Floyd? Floyd had to me has probably the second greatest defensive. He's the second greatest exactly. defender to me because he behind Ali. Exactly. Why I say that? Because Ali will count up with the offense too. That's why I can never put Floyd over Sugar Ray Leonard because Sugar Ray Leonard, he give you all, he give you the defense. Yeah, you just see, as great as Floyd. Like three, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I put Floyd number four and number five. Probably look at like Tyson. Tyson. Yeah, Tyson. 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 Yeah, 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 Tyson.
then that fight right there, I, that's the fight I seen when, um, when I saw on YouTube. And that was the fight. I, to me, watching that fight and then watching you spar, it's like it's a, not the same, not the same style. I mean, same speed because you got to mm -hmm. go eighty percent, like probably at least around 50, 60 and spar. But then mm -hmm. you know, of course, you got to go hard in that fight. But I seen the similarities and I seen the fight. And it's, speaking though, speak about that Vegas, the, the Vegas, the Vegas fight and the Floyd Mayweather. Was that that's the only that's the loss you took? Yeah, uh, that the only loss my, you have really. Yeah, it's my one L I got. Man, that fight, I'm not gonna lie, man. I, that fight made me the person I am today. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Made my team, you know, the team we are today. Yeah. Why we so solid right now because of that fight. So we never, you know, we we, we think, you know, positive mm -hmm. about it. You know, I'm glad I took it early in my career. What fight did it come to? It was like the third, fourth? It was my fourth. I was 3 0. He was 6 0 at the time. Okay, so you fought really a person that was. To the mm -hmm. to on paper, a person that was you know better you oh, yeah. record. I mean, you you know had more fights than me and everything. You know, you knew it was in his backyard and everything. It was in Vegas on on his promoter's card and everything. So yeah, home for the advantage. Yeah, I mean, and they they took advantage of it. That's how that's how we learned so much though. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. I can go on on and on. You know, the games they play and everything, but that's just boxing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You you either. Learn from it or you fold. We learned from it. We came back stronger, harder, smarter, you know, and now, you know, we unstoppable now. I think, honestly, me personally, I think boxing is, like, the most questionable sport when it comes to, like, rigged. Like, it's crazy. Like, boxing is like, boxing is one of my favorite sports. That's my yeah. third favorite behind yeah. football and basketball. Okay. But watching some fights, you go on YouTube and look at rigged boxing. Like, do you think sometimes... When you go into a fight and you were in Vegas or somewhere that's that's not in your home crowd, you, you don't have the judges behind you. Do you feel yeah. sometimes it's like, all right, we cannot make this fight go to the city because if it goes to decision, they the judges might lean towards the fighter that's hosted. Oh yeah, from my um, from that fight on, from my fourth fight in Vegas to to my seventh fight, that's that's how we've been going in. You know, been going in to. Everybody backyards, you know, knowing on the top of my head that hey, I gotta really kill, dang near kill this dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm I'm already down one judge already. Yeah. That's how we go in. It's three judges. I'm already down one before I step in the ring. That's the mindset we have. So we know if I don't knock this dude out, I gotta punish this dude. And that's what we've been doing. We've just been punishing boys. And the guy you fought in L.A. He is that was just like his last fight. Yeah, Ever since, they fall since, yeah. God, well, boxing, boxing though, it's a, it's a, ooh, that's that's a, it's not a grimy sport, but God, yeah, right, man, it's not, you got you sport, lose man. one time, it's like, yeah, I mean, when you have somebody to have, you know, a certain amount of, you know, dollars behind you, and they expect you to win, it's like a quarterback. It's and just it's like they just waste, they just wasted all their money. You know what I'm saying? Somebody right now really mad at me because like they invested a lot of money into that guy. He wasn't even from America. I think he was from Colombia. Yeah, he was from Colombia, so they brought him down here to LA and everything. And you know that's a lot of money. God, dog. one fight. It's like a quarterback playing for like a coach that that like benches people regardless. Yeah. One incompletion. One, yeah. <laughs> or like one, one turnover, shot. you're you're yeah. you're on the bench. One shot. God, dog. It happened to me though. You know when I uh. When I took an L in Vegas, man, it, I had to sit out a whole year. Yeah. You know, I ain't really missed that many days in the gym, but it's just the business of boxing, you know. It's, like I say, it's either you stay mentally strong and in the gym, or you fold and you stop going to the gym, you get frustrated and you quit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to quit. I ain't want that to that loss to make me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been doing this since I was seven, so... Yeah, so you think your mentality changed ever since that loss you had? Oh yeah, man. In in the ring, outside the ring, like I said that loss made me the the man I am today. It turned me into a man. I was a boy, you know what I'm saying? But that yeah. loss turned me into a man. After that, just outside of boxing too, you know. Yeah. So talk about that fight. Talk about the person you sparred against a few days, a couple of days ago, Austin Williams. Oh man, yeah, Austin Williams. He's a great guy, man. Met him like six months ago when he uh, claimed the number one spot in USA Amateur Boxing. You know, he came to my gym, I wasn't let it, 
saw him work, you know, had a conversation with him, you know, asked him if he could help me out because at the time I was getting ready for um, to fight a southpaw. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he helped me out in my camp. This is actually my uh, third southpaw I'm fighting in a row on uh, on August 11th. Yeah. Fifth southpaw I'm fighting out of eight fights. Yeah. So, you know, I asked him, you know, because you, you know, but he helped me, you know, with sparring and everything. He a good look. He a good softball. Look fast, quick feet, could be aggressive, strong. Cause he fight at 165 in the amateurs, you know. So he he a middleweight. He bigger than me, but he got that speed like a welterweight. So it's just good work. Yeah. And you talk about Austin, and he. What was his reaction when he got the number one spot? Cause I know you get number one spot. You know, sometimes you got two different ways. You people that that's humble. And then you got other people like, man, when they get it, it's like, oh, they feel like they top of the world sometimes. And uh, Austin Williams is super humble, man. You, yeah. you don't get no more humble than Austin Williams, you know what I'm saying? He, mm -hmm. You know, he give me the respect, you know what I'm saying? Because he know I've been fighting for a really, really long time. You know, like you say, even though he number one, you know, he look up to me, you know, to help him out, you know, to keep him at that number one spot, you know what I'm saying? So He's he, only 20. Yeah, I think he's only like 20. Yeah, he's young, man. He great dude, though. Humble, real humble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's making my last name look good. I'm Williams. <laughs> at least he's at least he's doing that. God, twenty years old. Yeah. Shape, man. Shape, cut up tone. Oh, Y'all yeah. boss me. Y'all go, man. He, he don't get to the number one spot. Sitting down, man. I yeah, know. It's so, man. Just think how many one sixty five pounds it is in America. I know, right? You got, you got the fat 165. You got, yeah. you got the tall. You ranked number one. So, God, dog, that's crazy. So, just talk about the, like the day, like a day of you, like the mentality as a boxer, like throughout the day, like meal plan, like the workouts, like how does it go through, like throughout the week? Well, I wake up around seven, eight in the morning. Eat me, you know, a nice lean breakfast. It could be. uh you know, wheat toast, oatmeal, mm -hmm. fruit. Then I go run me four or five miles. And then Non uh, stop. Like just yeah, straight non stop, up. yeah. Of course. Shoot me. I mean, I'm half a mile, I'm tired. Ain't really a lot. You know, I had actually slowed down on my running because, you know, running sometimes you run so much you can run muscle off. Yeah. And I ain't I, I ain't wanna run none of my muscle off I and mean, you know, I wanna stay strong so I kinda cut down on my running. Mm -hmm. So I gotta run four miles and then uh me, you know, I I'm in a lot of stuff right now. I'm in CDL classes right now. I work, you know what I'm saying? So I run and then I go work. And then after I work I go to the gym. Yeah. But I'm eating every three hours, you know what I'm saying? And I stop eating after eight. Eight, eight PM. Mm hmm Man, man, you gotta wake up, go to sleep early probably. Oh yeah, wake you up stay hungry. up, you're gonna be hungry. Oh, when you wake up, you soup starting. So when you first started getting on it, you you got to get adjusted to it like very very quick. I mean, I've been doing this since I was seven, man. So it was like There's I'm nothing so used to this. Yeah, I've been yes. making weight ever since I was an amateur boxer. Yeah. So let's talk about talk about your upcoming opponent. You got Vincent Floyd when you mm -hmm. fight him in Philly, August 11th. Mm -hmm. Just talk just talk about that opponent. Well, the only thing I know about him is he uh five <laughs> eleven. Supposed to be, you know, a tall welterweight too. Mm -hmm. but I, I'm 6'1. I've never seen a welterweight taller than me. I'm 6'1 and a half. Yeah. So, tall don't really matter. I know he's from Philly, fighting him in his backyard. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. You know, the guy I'm about to go beat in his backyard. And he is softball. That's all I really know about him. Yeah. And he's just fighting. He's fighting in Philly. And he's an East Coast guy. So, when you talk about your first fight, let's go back to your first fight. You told me that it was like in the like in the uh, flea market. Flea market, yep. Man, yep. it's crazy how you watch the guys not as like big time that you don't remember. Us as fans don't remember. Like you know, you probably got you got talking people. They they tell you that they fought at like a small. You forget they get it from the mud. Like you just yeah. think watching them on pay per view, whether they automatically assume that they started there. But nah, man, it's we, it's crazy. Yeah, we we been getting it out the mud, man. It was we like that. You know, yeah, go through, like, that fight was a blessing in a flea market, you know what I'm saying? Because you have to go through their managers and just every, everything. Man, business of boxing, you know, opponents falling out, 
opponent can fall out like that, you know what I'm saying? Nah. If they don't sign no contract, they can fall out like that. Yeah. So, man. So, let's talk, just talk about your camps. Just talk about who, um, your trainer, managers. Just talk oh, about them. Um, how they impacted you. Well, first off, my pops, you know, he the one that, that got me started, you know, in this. You know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. the one that first brought me to the gym. First one started training me, really taught me most of everything I know, you know. That's why my defense so good and everything, because of him. And uh, I met uh, James Johnson a little later on in my career. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, James, he, oh, okay, yeah. And then I met uh, James Cooper, the president yeah. that you met the other day mm -hmm. when I went to O Athletic. And uh, my manager, Titus, he been with me ever since I turned pro, I think it was in, was it 2014? 13. 2013, yeah, so four years. Ever since I first, he the one the first really just believed in me, you know what I'm saying, seeing yeah. me, you know, it was like, yeah, man, I, you know, first first dude started doing stuff for me as a pro, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Started making moves for me, so yeah. I've been rocking ever since. He like, a, uh, he like a father figure to me, too. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about um, O Athletic. We're just about James Cooper. Just talk about, you know, the impact that he has on you. The Champions League. That's a huge, nice facility. Man, Bet to me, yeah. best one in Houston. It is the best one in Houston. Yeah. No, it's the best one probably in this region. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, can't show me better than that. But, man, James, James Cooper got a huge impact on my life right now, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very thankful for James Cooper. You know, he allowed me to work at his facility, not only work there, but to train there, you know, don't, don't ask me for a dime, you know what I'm saying, he just, he sees a work ethic and he, you know, he let me come there, use the facility, yeah. help me in any way he can, mm -hmm. you know, so, good, you know, really good dude. Dang, yeah, I looked in that, that place is like everything, so it's like mm -hmm. you basically have an advantage over a lot of fighters. Oh yeah, I do. Cause you already got not Main Street gym, but you have OFC. State of the art. State of the art facility. Yeah. God. Four point one million. Four point one million dollars. Jesus yeah. Christ! So you like you have the hill, you have the boxing ring, of course sand. the weights, sand. You know what I'm saying? You got the if you want to. Hell, field inside. Soccer field, you know, you know whatever you want to do on there. Yeah, we sprint in there, do a lot of things. Yeah. God. Oh, so it's like. Pool with treadmills in it, sauna steam room, cryotherapy for recovery, hot yoga. We got a whole yoga class dedicated to the boxes for recovery. God. Oh, so you have everything up there. So this. Everything I need, one stop shop. So when. Was you there day one when it first uh, opened? Because uh -huh. it started, you said it had been 18 months. Mm -hmm. So when did you start going there? I started going there probably like eight months after, six to eight months after it opened. It was still very new when I came. And then you so, got, it's still, it's still new. It's still really new, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm coming up on a year now. Okay. In September, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And the... Uh, Let's talk. Let's let's just switch sides to to boxing now. You know, we got two big fights coming up in you know that's coming up mainstream. Mm -hmm. Mayweather McGregor, yeah. Canelo Triple G. Yeah. So I know as a boxer, how do you feel about the Mayweather McGregor fight? Just as a boxer. As a boxer. Yeah. So let's talk about that. as a as a boxer. How you feel about it? or as, and as a person, just a just a person, right? I mean, just watch. As a boxer, I feel like it's a joke. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. You about to. Thrash this dude. This dude ain't never, you know, been in a professional fight. But as a fan, I'm like, you know, it's, you know, gonna be something gonna to watch. Him? You think they gonna get him? Man, come on. You, you think gonna, you think McGregor ain't have no chance? Come on, man. This dude ain't one through ten. no chance. One, one through, through ten, how? probably got like a, a two. Man. Right. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm a, got a two. See, this is the, the, see, this, this, this is. Pacquiao can do it. What make you think McGregor gonna do it? Well. I think Matt Pacquiao tore his rotator cuff, so we are gonna let him slide on that. Okay. So, but number two, this is this is my thing. All right. I'm not saying I'm going for McGregor or Mayweather. I'm just giving you my my two cents. Okay. As a fan, I'm looking at it like this. 
McGregor take punches. He take punches from four ounce little damn near your belt knuckles. Mm -hmm. So do I think people say he gonna get knocked out by Mayweather? No, that's, nah, not, gonna that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. So you got Mayweather, who's not a knock. He never knocked about nobody out in two years. I mean, twenty years. Do we really expect McGregor to get knocked out from a twelve ounce glove? Maybe twelve ounce correct? They fighting? They, 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 nah, Tw they fighting. Uh, professional. I don't know if they have some kind of you know. I think ten ounce. I think it's probably. yeah. It's, it's eight, ten. It's ten ounce. Ten, ten ounce. ounce yeah. Ten ounce gloves. This dude take knees to the nose. You know, like he takes shins to the to the nose. Yeah. Do I expect him to get knocked out? Heck, that's not. He's not. It's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. He. I think McGregor's gonna walk through the Mayweather punches. It gets my, my my analysis of this. He's gonna go hard the first three, because mm -hmm. like he said, I really truly believe he want to get him before round four, because gotcha. he goes after round four. That's when fatigue kicks in. Mm -hmm. That's when Mayweather starts to. He ain't never going to start rounds, but well, even though his rounds are five minutes in exactly. UFC, but he never went that long. Never went that long, you know. So I'm looking at it like this. People saying knockout because he's a UFC fighter, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying I'm looking at it like this. I don't see no knockout, and I don't just see yeah, McGregor nah. just laying down like he's going to. Hands too brittle, you know. He been having hand yeah. injuries like his last past what five years or something like and that. Age difference. He's just going to probably clown him. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. He probably going to give him a boxing lesson and just start clowning him and styling right. on him and just. If it goes round seven or eight, if I'm McGregor, I just I just need maybe what the. <laughs> just, just need him, man. Like, you know, that. He probably just gonna end up just kicking him, man. Yeah, let's do something, man. Yeah. You know, I think, but I think it was too much favoritism for Mayweather. Yeah, that's what I said too. I they should have went for. They should have went eight ounce gloves. I thought I was like, you gonna let McGregor you know, you get some boxing? At know. least make the gloves for Yeah, or something. You know? yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is he he in Floyd's territory? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I mean, it's like, come on, man. So we talk about you. You think with Mayweather, if he fuck, you seen back in the day. Ali Foreman Zaire, you seen Ali Frazier, New York. We Ali never just had all his fights in Vegas. Tyson, you know, all the greats. Mayweather, do you think the home field played a little part in oh, his yeah. record? Oh yeah. I think so. Oh yeah. I think you know, you look at some fights, you know, he could have yeah. we look at Pacquiao, he just got rigged in Australia. Yeah. Like he was in Australia I mean, they all on the road. Mean, uh, Jerry Jones uh offered to, to lease out the Cowboy Stadium for him and Pacquiao, man. Pacquiao and Bradley, he huh? He put like 60,000, 70,000 probably in the stands. Yeah, probably be more, it'll be more fans. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, 60,000, 70,000 fans, time, I mean, and, and you comparing that with what MGM ran the garden, what, hold 12,000? Never been before, but. Yeah, that's, that's the, like, I think they hold like 12,000. So why would you rather fight in the garden? You know what I'm saying? Well, you only put 12,000 people there, opposed to you can put 70,000 people in Cowboy Stadium. Yeah. There's something behind that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Something. I know if it was me, I'd be like, hey, let's get this money. Let's, let's pack 70,000. Let's Cowboy Stadium. Let's go. Let's put 70,000. Because they ain't even doing that in America. And plus the floor seats. They doing that overseas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what's that heavyweight name right now? Uh, Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Man. Dude putting sixty thousand in the stands right now, man, overseas. That's crazy. You know a bigger name. That's like a soccer. That's like a soccer game, like right? you know what I'm saying? Yo. You know, boxing. Yeah. You, you know, you usually don't have that many people, but yeah. Yeah, they putting sixty thousand because they don't have football or nothing like that. You know, exactly. they have soccer, boxing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. to do that in America is huge. I know. It did. I saw. I saw. I saw. Thing. I saw thing. I don't know, that fight. He definitely got the home. I mean, he, I know firsthand. <laughs> you know, I went down there, you know what I'm saying, if I one of his fighters, you know, it's, they, you know what I'm saying? You they, gotta come, be, they come in the, they come in the army. You, you got to be mentally tough and you got to be ready for the games they're going to play, you know what I'm saying? Was made with the uh, ringside when you fought, when you fought this dude? Uh, I heard he came at the end. I ain't seen him. I heard he came through yeah, at Adrian the end. Adrian Broner and them? Um, no, I don't think Adrian Broner. I know Terrence Crawford was at my fight. He came up and told me, you know what I'm saying, keep my head up, keep going, yeah. you know, because What's the at the end of the day, I ended up thrashing the dude, you know what I'm saying, yeah. third or fourth round, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So was it split or was it um, majority? Nah, they gave him three rounds to one. Oh, it was four judges? Oh, yo, no, three four, four round, four yeah, round yeah, fight, four yeah, yeah. Fight, yeah. It was three uh -huh. judges, yeah. Oh, man. All judges had the same scorecard. So who do you think you fight like? Like, what's your style, you think? Uh... 
Man, people look at I you got like my that. own style, man. It's like you can't compare my style to nobody. Well, who, who you think? Like I, I'm a mix between Marvin Hagler, Sweet P, Roy Jones Jr., Floyd Mayweather. I incorporate all that. Yeah, you just watch them. Tommy, I'm Tommy Hearns. You know. Uh, Couple more other people, yeah. I, I mix everything in. Yeah, I got my own unique style. So, all right. So we're gonna move from one fight to another. Canelo Triple G. What we think of that? No, first of all, do you think Mayweather McGregor is going twelve rounds? Yeah. Think so? Mm-hmm. It better be a tw- yeah. it better be twelve entertaining rounds. Yeah. Like I said, I don't think I don't know. McGregor might 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 get him. I'm not get him, but I think he's gonna probably end it. It's gotta be entertaining. Yeah. It might not be. You know, I, I know he's knocking him out. Huh? I know he's knocking him out. Right. I, I think he's just going, like I said, just beat him up pretty bad. Shit, it might be a draw. Yeah. My, my theory, my conspiracy theory is it'd it, it be a draw, and then they see how much money's coming in. Man, second fight, rematch, billion dollar fight. You know, remember, he didn't pay them taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't pay the IRS, he need the money. Yeah. It's your jaw, make a rematch. It wasn't really hurt for nothing, man. Billion dollar fight. I'm yeah. calling call it right now. He ain't hurt for nothing. It's just a matter of when he want to pay it, you know what I'm saying? I know, right? He ain't hurt, but, man. Talking about Triple G. I got Triple G, KO, Canelo, 7-8 run. Nah, that's a fight. Nah, that's, that's supposed to be a, that's Yeah, that's the one. That's the one I'm waiting on, too. That's the boxer. That's the one I want to see. That's yeah. a big fight, too. See, yeah, Mayweather McGregor, that's a good fight party fight. You know, everybody yeah, like, having a fight party at the house. You know, you know everybody do what they got to do. This is like the real. This is the real G. This is going to be fight of the year, right? Here. This is what everybody been waiting for. Two, two years, like two years, years almost, I think. Yeah, finally. God. No, finally. That's, now, that's the fight that's, I think, you know, that could be a, I could see a trilogy. Yeah. I could see a Canelo mm-hmm. Triple G two and three. You yeah. know, we seen time. Because, honestly, I was, I was talking to somebody about this. If you really think about it, this is probably the, the first big super fight with two fighters in their prime since Tyson Holyfield, the first uh, when exactly. they fought. Exactly. Think about it, in 20 years, exactly. from 97 to now. Some, well, no, no. Keith Derman and, uh, and Sean Porter. But think about it. Those two guys wasn't really, they wasn't holding up to the names of Tyson Holyfield yeah. and uh, Triple G. But as far as fighting their primes, they did it, man. They, went they at did it. it. They went but I'm, it. I'm looking at name and dominance and prime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We think about like, oh, like, oh my goodness, this is about to happen. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. This was probably the, the first two biggest, one. Yeah, the two biggest names. Yeah, 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 you know right. what I'm saying? Because Tyson, yeah. he lost against Douglas, but that wasn't a real, that wasn't, that was a fight. Well, okay, he lost Cus D'Amato. The yeah. trainer didn't know what they was doing. Uh-huh. He knocked out Douglas, but they didn't count the full way. Yeah. So really, I think that was, that was a, to me a cheap fight already. So his first real loss against Holyfield, the odds were yeah. still favoring Tyson the second fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you look at this fight, Canelo Triple G, this is a fight that's like it's supposed. It was supposed to be married with the Pacquiao back in 09, 2010. Yeah. When, it po- when it both was like you know young and in yeah. prime. Yeah. But maybe he didn't want long. that. He didn't want that. He didn't want that. But yeah, boxing always take too long. long. That's how boxing yeah. is. So I, I want to ask you that. How you feel about when it comes to boxing and promotion? Because you look at UFC and and um, boxing. UFC has management with Dana White, mm-hmm. and I look at UFC as like the NFL. Mm-hmm. You know, the the owners in control. Everything yeah, is powered yeah. by them. Boxing is just yeah, like yeah. the NBA. It's everything. The the boxers have the power. You look at Mayweather. You know, he's stalling on fights. You know, there's I wish no boxing was like the NBA. NBA, you know, they guaranteed. They guaranteed. They can't guarantee nothing in boxing. We don't have no commission looking over every everything was going on. Yeah, it's free for all. So hey, but wait, do you have a problem with fights taking too long though? Like, I'm glad De La Hoya got the Triple G Canelo fight. I'm glad yeah. that's there. But like, we seen Pacquiao maybe to have seven years almost. Like excuses after excuses after excuses. Ain't like don't nobody want to fight the best no more, man. They want to make the maximum amount of money. Fighting the sorriest opponents they can fight. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, but that's how it is. Nobody want to fight the best no more if they ain't got to. I do. Yep. I'm, a, I'm a fighter. I want to fight. You know what I'm saying? But everybody, it seems like these days, want to take the easy, the easy route. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They want to get paid the big million, but they don't want to take the big fights. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like boxers, somebody's getting overpaid for the people they fighting. 
He ain't paid big bucks who he fighting up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I mean, but, you know, it's, been, it's a business, though. That's yeah. what, you know, it's a business. It ain't just a sport. I see it, all the other sports, like football, everything, it's a sport, too. You know what I'm saying? They got, mm-hmm. they got commission looking over everything, making sure there ain't no foul play or nothing like that. Boxing, man, you don't got, we ain't got that. Mm-hmm. You know, making sure everybody being, you know, treated fairly. You know, you got pros out there, 13, 14 and 0. Winning fights, you know what I'm saying? Getting shelved, you know. If you look at Charlo twins, they, I want to say, one of them is undefeated. Both of them. Both of them. Both of them undefeated, undefeated champions. But, you know, they fought, I remember they fought NRG before, but, like, Charlo twins is a name that you hear around the region. And, you know, around the country, you know, it's some whispers, but it's not held to a point where, like, they record don't show, like, the popularity. Like, they should be more known than... What the other? It's a couple fights. Like they got Wilder and they know now. Oh yeah, yeah. you you in boxing, you know about the Charlo twins, yeah. man. They made history. First twins, uh, whole world championships at the same time. And then you don't see, you know, but the general public is like. And me and me and the twins go way back. Yeah. We we grew up in boxing together. You know what I'm saying? So down the boxing club, I was like nine years old. They was like eleven, twelve years old. I was younger than them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I seen them come up from the mud. You know, that same gym, same dream. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, nobody would ever. I ain't gonna lie to you. Nobody would ever thought the twins would be where they at right now. Nobody. nobody. Yeah, the doubt got to nobody. Them. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't just the stars of the gym. You know, like we had stars of the gym that we don't even know where they at right now. But the twins stuck with it, worked hard. You know what I'm saying? And now they. They the face of Houston boxing right now. They really are. You know what I'm really, saying? They really are. You think about Charlo, you think of think of Houston boxing, you think it's of Charlo. You know, Charlo. Yeah. They on top. They doing their thing. And then of course you're gonna wanna have that that problem. Oh, yeah. You wanna have that that name now for yourself in the future. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah. Man, it'll it'll get there. It'll mm-hmm. get there. You know, they I wanna say their record is I they I know they're undefeated for sure. Yeah. I don't know they're going to fight. 25, 26, yeah. 27, and 0 piece, something like that. And one of them just had a fight recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, so as far as, um, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can get your prediction on Canelo Triple G. I think you said knockout. You said seven round? Seven round Triple Canelo G. Had no ch- Canelo had no chance. I'm just He's not a baby no more. He's huh? he not a baby no more. He's more mature he's now. Right. You know, he fought Mayweather at that he time. He was, he was young. Yeah, but... I don't think he, he's fought a puncher. Like Another Triple puncher G. Like Triple G. Yeah, I got Triple you know G as well, man. man. He ain't never fought nobody that strong before like that. Yeah. I got Triple G winning as well. I have him. But I, I do want to see that. I mean, that fight, of course, will be way better. I just, it's the fact that we had never had, you know, back to back fights like that. Mayweather, mm-hmm. then you have the Canelo Triple G. That never yeah, had before. Yeah. Then it sucks for the, the promotion now. Like, people didn't forget about it, but it's like, oh, shoot. Football season is right, right there yeah. with another Triple G. You have Mayweather and McGregor fighting before then. So I'm going to know from Philly what's the plans after. Well, you know, we we worry about the task at hand. You know, I got to get through this guy. Mm-hmm. But when I do get through this guy, you know, first plan is to get right back in the gym and uh, try to get another fight ASAP as soon as possible. Man, I want you to tell that camera right there. Which was going to happen August 11th? What's, yeah. what's going to happen August 11th in Philadelphia? Sugar House man. Casino. Fireworks. Doors open at 6. Fireworks, man. I will have a fight of the night, like I always do. I will come back with hundreds of more fans, like I always do. And Philadelphia will know the name Marcus Marquise Taylor. That's what's going to happen August 11th. So you predicting a knockout? Uh, Wait, give me that Ali. You know, Ali always get the. I'm gonna knock him out. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see the dude going six rounds with me. Yeah. You know, I really don't. So, yeah, I yeah. am. There you go. There you have it. That was the sixth show. Sixth episode of The Real Deal with the Kill on SoundCloud. We'll be on YouTube tonight. I appreciate you for coming. I appreciate you for having me. Any last words? Uh, Yeah, man. Follow me on uh, social media, on my Instagram. M A R Q underscore Taylor. That's Instagram. For uh, my Twitter is Marvelous Keys. M A R V E L O U S underscore 
Q U I S again M A R V E L O U S underscore Q U I S. I'm Marquise Taylor, up and coming, welcome away from Houston, Texas, and you watching Real Deal with the Kid.